Ladies and gentlemen, share this segment with anyone who wants to understand the insidious nature of the congressional panel investigating Trump and the truly irresponsible manner in which media has covered this story. CNN, witnesses say Trump spoke approvingly of some crazy statements made against his vice president, okay? Criminal acts leveled at his vice president, okay? People making just horrific statements and attributed to supporters of President Trump. But, but this is CNN. Witnesses say Trump spoke approvingly. Video, Liz Cheney reveals how Trump reacted to chance. CNN. CNN, Trump reacted with approval to chance regarding, you know, despicable, cl- despicable statements towards his vice president, Pence. And there's no evidence. There's a staffer, uh, a staffer of Mark Meadows, some other people that were interviewed, CNN, Trump reacted with approval to Chance. Okay, this is Jim Acosta who is very quick to condemn people on his show for irresponsible rhetoric. He tweets out, Trump reacted with approval. How do you know this? How does anyone know this? Did, did, did Joe ever, our, our president mashed potato brains, was he ever accused of reacting with approval? to Hunter's business associates who gave him hundreds of thousands and millions with the expectation or the understanding that they'd receive beneficial treatment that's listed within his emails. Like, if you read the emails, you will see. It's beyond suspicious. There, there's, there's justification for a special counsel there. If you read the emails, but people, life, lifelong liberal Democrats, wonderful, morally superior fantastic, amazing human beings, highly educated, don't read the emails, so they don't know. (laughs) How do you react approvingly based on the witness testimony? It's called hearsay and gossip. Gossip used to be just, that's what it used to be called. Now it's witness testimony pertaining to what Trump said. And therefore this means that Trump was trying to end the life of his vice president. Don't you see? Can't you make the absurd... Leaps of logic like a complete imbecile. And so, I mean, even Fox News is, a, this is uh, affiliate. No, it's a different, no, it's not. It's that's, that's a different, it's not an affiliate. Politico, Trump expressed support for harming his vice president. Where, how is this journalism? Do you ever get Hillary expressed support for Jake Sullivan to transfer top secret or classified data onto servers outside of the United States government? Do you ever get President Obama expressed support for Clapper and Brennan to utilize the Steele dossier against Trump? Where are the witnesses? Do you, is there, are there any witnesses uh, uh, within the Democratic Party who will attest and testify to statements made linked to possible criminal behavior without those statements being recorded or without any evidence you could prove those statements took place. And here's where we are in American politics. Now we get to Pence. And according to um, Schiff and others, Pence's demand for, Janu- for, for testimony uh, is a possibility. And Pence could be Bloomberg, Pence could be demanded by the January committee to testify. The problem is they don't have anything on Trump, even if even if they get Pence to testify, which is hilarious that he won't even testify. These people believe in conspiratorial fantasies and theories. And then they, they complain about Trumpers and Republicans and, and uh, oh, and... Bernie supporters from 2016 and Green Party people believing in, you know, these really bizarre theories. 
It's like they're the ones who get media and government to legitimize or justify their complete nonsense. This used to be called hearsay and gossip. This was never journalism, and it certainly was never a part of American politics. Nobody in the 80s reported what, Tr- what Reagan was alleged to have said, okay? Or what Bill Clinton was alleged to have, well, maybe with him, but he actually did lie under oath. Hit subscribe to this channel, ladies and gentlemen, by the way, before I forget, and hit subscribe to the stock market crash channel and the Bitcoin crash channel to 10,000 or lower. I have a segment on the stock market crash channel. Our beloved president, Mashed Potato, is asking other countries with uh, huge issues pertaining to environmental... Uh, they, they don't have the consideration or the you know, f- emphasis or focus on addressing climate change in their countries. So it's bizarre that Democrats would be okay with this. The rationale is they don't want to drill and they don't want to increase oil production and they want to make it difficult for fossil fuels or that the, ind- the oil and gas industries to survive in the United States of America, which is why we'll have a diesel exhaust fuel shortage. And diesel fuel will be so expensive that trucks, cargo ships, trains will grind to a halt, and commerce and capitalism will grind to a halt, which is perhaps what Democrats want. Very likely it's what they want for some odd reason. But they're okay with asking other countries that ha- do not have nearly the standards we do in terms of environmental protection. They're, 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 they're okay with asking them to import the oil that we could drill here at home because apparently Democrats and mashed potato brains Joe and his administration don't care about the people in those countries. See, climate change is a global issue, except when it comes to allowing American oil producers to produce, uh, to increase production of oil. Uh, we can't have that here. But we don't mind if other countries do and, and other countries um, experience the consequences of increased oil production in those countries. But we don't really see, like, the morally superior among us, the beautiful, highly educated liberals, don't see the planet as, you know, an entire planet. It's as long as we feel good about ourselves here. Um, if we drive an electric car vehicle and cobalt and lithium and nickel is mined by indigenous people in other countries, that's fine, according to... Uh, AOC and others, but 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 it's uh, all about carbon emissions. And I wrote in the Federalist my first article, not just about the stock market crash that I predicted in October, but I wrote about the cobalt, uh, lithium, and nickel that's mined by um, indigenous people in other countries, and pe- lives lost, and people like you know suffering a great deal mining these. Metals used for electric car vehicle batteries. But anyway, hit subscribe to all three channels. And if you want to support my work, my Patreon is below. Um, And if you want to give a super thanks to this segment, the super thanks is below. But definitely hit subscribe to all three channels. Um, He did not react approvingly. Uh, If he did, it wasn't within the manner, within the context of uh, that he was actually trying to end the life of his vice president, okay? So Pence was never at risk by Trump or anyone else, by the way. If you have maniacs that are saying things that are horrible, that doesn't mean that Trump told them to say those things or that Trump truly approves or reacted with approval, okay? Just like uh, if you could get a recording of Joe, you could get a re- actually you get a, you have a recording. The Washington Examiner has a recording of Hunter saying that his father Joe will it will focus on any topic important to him. Okay, that ties in directly to how can you use your influence on behalf on the company's behalf. One of the emails. Okay, you can actually get emails that they wrote and a recording, and you could actually get the two and still. Media and Democrats were like, no, 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 you can't prove anything. There's no direct evidence. But with Trump, the reporting is, oh, well, he reacted approvingly. How do we know? Because people have said he did. 
and he really wanted to end the life of somebody. And if I'm long-winded, there's a method to the madness, okay? <laughs> if you watch this channel, you know there's a method to the madness, the reason I'm long-winded. But Pence hasn't testified because this congressional panel has nothing on Trump. Now, does that mean that he won't get indicted? He, he could very well get indicted before 24. We're going to head into not only a recession, a prolonged recession, very likely three to four quarters of negative growth or more. Okay? There are going to be massive layoffs. Inflation is not going to subside. Energy prices will continue to increase because our even if um, oil goes down in price, we don't have the oil refinery capacity that we used to have. And we have a shortage of diesel, a type of diesel fuel. And diesel is getting too expensive for independent trucking companies to survive. So once those companies, God forbid, go under, and I don't want that to happen, but Democrats are working overtime to ensure that happens with policies that are meant to transform the country from a fossil, a, a, an economy based on fossil fuels to renewables that we don't have. We do not have renewables. and Wind and solar cannot replace fossil fuels. But John Kerry said we can't build another refinery. And the Chevron CEO said, yeah, we can't build another refinery because of people like John Kerry and others who make it impossible. This administration was sued by oil and gas associations and it was sued by oil, oil and gas companies. Or no, by, by 14 states. Okay. Biden came into the Oval Office doing everything possible to tell the world we are going to battle with the oil and gas and fossil fuel industry. We're going to battle with them. We're going to transform the, co the country in, in 10 years. We're going to do away with, uh, uh, you know, uh, we're going to do away with, with the cars people drive and everyone's going to drive an electric car vehicle. And he had, it, he had it. executive orders on carbon emissions and... Um, a whole bunch of policies to combat and address climate change. Okay, then own it. Don't say it's the oil company's fault when prices go up. They were already saying that his policies were going to cause prices to go up. Then the cognitive dissonance is that, well, it's price gouging. You've targeted an entire industry and made it more difficult and more expensive for it to run. Okay, it's more expensive now and and it's an industry where there's no there's no, nothing is predictable it's completely unpredictable in terms of uh projections supply and demand projections and what will happen with local state and federal laws pertaining to how they can run oil and gas companies so from a ban on leasing in federal lands to making it difficult. Say that they say, well, there's permits that they have. Yeah, but after the permits, they have to get a whole bunch of other permits. And Democrats within uh, local, and within city and state and on the federal level make it difficult to get the other permits. And the, and the oil companies explain this. So it's not a matter of, oh, you're taking the side of the oil companies. It's like, well, no, this is the reality. Remember when we were told that experts, if you're not an expert, if you're not a specific uh, person working in a specific industry and an expert and you don't have the credentials, two years ago they were saying that. If God forbid you had any questions regarding, um, you know, what they were telling you to do. You're not an expert. You don't know. Okay, well, you know what, media, Democrats, environmentalists, you're not an expert in terms of oil and gas. You're not an expert. You don't work in the oil and gas industry, do you? Do you run an oil and gas company? Do you know how to drill for oil? Do you know anything about the business of fossil fuels, like the people who actually run those businesses? They're experts. You're not. Don't blame price gouging when you your policies literally caused all of this. And then let's not even get started with if you go to my go to the description section of every one of my segments, aside from the uh, <laughs> the segments where I predict the stock market crash and the economic collapse, and honestly. Has anybody go try to find somebody on YouTube in September telling you this? Okay, go to the description. You'll have three or four segments that I have 
predicting the stock market crash, the economic collapse, and the Bitcoin crash. The first thing you see in the, in the description section, subscribe to all those channels. This channel and the, Bitcoin, the, the stock market crash channel and also the Bitcoin crash, the 10,000 or lower channel. But before, below that, you get the National Association of Manufacturers, the Business Roundtable, and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, all opposing Build Back Better. That's, what, that's alongside oil and, oil and gas associations and 14 states suing the current administration because their policies uh, harm their industry. And then Democrats blame price gouging. <laughs> It's like, well, you've made it so unpredictable and so difficult to do business, and there's a steel shortage, and they need steel, uh, they need steel uh, to drill for oil. And so there's all of these problems that were not addressed in 2021, and that's why the prices are high. And that's why the profit margins are a little bit you know, higher than they used to be. But that would take place in any industry. It's called capitalism. If you don't like it, then, well, push, what, for, push for what you're pushing for. I guess continue to do what you're doing, okay? Believe me, if Apple had to sell its iPhone for twice as much, you wouldn't get um, you wouldn't get any any response from the current administration. the The, the problem is they didn't believe that this was an, a strategic or geopolitical or national security issue. Then they found out very quickly that it was. They miscalculated and made a huge, huge mistake, and the entire country is paying for it. So all the working class people that the left cares about so much, all the people who were mired in poverty or, or, or were maybe out of poverty and now stuck back into poverty because of inflation, it's like this is the fault of Democrats. The people who pride themselves on helping people uh, out of poverty. These are the people who pride them. They look in the mirror like, oh, we're so good and just and moral. It's like, well, no, your policies actually ruin the lives of so many people around the country, and you don't even realize it. But anyway, getting back to Pence, um, he's not going to testify, almost certainly will not testify. If he does, it'll be a really horrible, uh, another failure of, for Liz Cheney and Kinzinger. Okay, this is a theatrical performance. Why didn't Adam Kinzinger or Liz Cheney ever condemn what took place that summer with one to two billion dollars in property damage, 19 lives lost according to Wikipedia, and 14,000 arrests? That's okay to Kinzinger? Is that okay to, to Cheney? I, yeah, the cause was different, and I, uh, that I support the cause, why people were demonstrating that summer, yes. But, I, but no, no, nothing is worth that carnage. Sorry. And so... They don't condemn that. And then Cheney talks about dishonor. It's, this is the Lincoln Project people not only pushed for never-ending counterinsurgency conflicts and that, that, that destabilized regions and, ruined the, and hurt the, harmed the lives of a great many Americans and of people in other countries, but these people were also against marriage equality. They wanted a marriage amendment. The Bush, Cheney, Rumsfeld people should have been canceled a long time ago by the left. But the left, for some reason, thinks that Trump Republicans care about their viewpoints, which is hilarious. Like, <laughs> that's so hilarious. Nobody cares about their viewpoints. The Lincoln Project people are like the nerds in an 80s movie that are momentarily allowed into the cool crowd. They think that they're accepted. They will never in a million years be accepted. They're not accepted by Trump Republicans, that's for sure. They were kicked out. Trump took his orange boot and kicked them out. And they're definitely not accept accepted within the Democratic Party. They're just, you know, momentarily utilized. But anyway, Pence is not going to, um, Pence is almost certainly not going to testify. If he does testify, it will be yet another blunder because he'll, he'll explain that, yeah, he never had that Trump never expressed any type of, you know, horrific statement or criminal intent or statement towards him. And that his life was never truly in jeopardy. And of course, of course, I condemn and oppose and, you know, any statement against Mike, any like horrible criminal statement against him. That's terrible. Nobody wants that towards anyone. And I think that's the problem in American politics now. You have, like, 
these, one, these wonderful morally superior activists going to the homes of Supreme Court justices. You're not going to, like, if you want to actually change their viewpoint, like, if you wanted to change the viewpoint, this is the way the left works. We're not going to change your viewpoint, but we're going to try to harass you and demean you and mock you and, and intimidate you. We're going to make you not have a peaceful day. It's like, well, do you want to actually win a debate or maybe change the mind of another person? They don't even have the willpower to do that because they know at the end of the day they can't, they can't in a coherent manner describe or you know present their argument with facts and reason and logic and discourse and debate and discussion. They can't do that because oftentimes their arguments rely on absurd leaps of logic. Or it's the, or they're getting really upset for something that is, isn't exactly what they think they're getting upset about. Or in the case of uh, Roe v. Wade, um, they don't have the common sense to look and to ask, well, why are there three Supreme Court justices? Oh, that's right. You cheated Bernie Sanders in 2016. Oh, that's why. Because at that moment in time, I look, I, I support Trump and DeSantis because I want a functioning great economy. I want a functioning economy and I want a great economy and I want a great foreign policy, which is opposed by the Lincoln Project. If you have a foreign policy opposed by the Lincoln Project, the Bush, Cheney, Rumsfeld people, wonderful. I will vote for that person. But at that moment in time, I used to be the biggest Bernie Sanders booster on the internet, according to the Huffington Post. The unofficial scribe of Sanders is the most hardcore voters, according to the Washington Post. At that moment in time, at that very moment in time, okay, I know people disagree with me, but Bernie Sanders would have defeated Trump had he not been cheated by Democrats. So Democrats did this to themselves, but they can't look in the mirror. Don't you understand? None of them ever even acknowledge that Bernie was cheated. They just say that he was, they say two things at once. The cognitive dissonance is unbelievable. They say, well, he wasn't cheated. It was a fair primary. And oh, also, the Kremlin uh, hacked the DNC to inform the country that Bernie Sanders was cheated, thus forcing Debbie Wasserman Schultz to resign. Okay, so if another country wanted to hack the DNC emails just to, uh, just to show the world that Bernie Sanders was unfairly treated, um, yeah, you ruined your, your chance at that moment for three Supreme Court justices. And you chose the person that I told everyone in the world, in the Hill, the Huffington Post, Salon, and, you know, everywhere, I said that Clinton would lose to Trump. Now I'm saying, please, 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 God, Hillary Trump 2024, Hillary DeSantis 2024, and Hillary Clinton's going to run again, I think, because mashed potato brains Joe will not run again. Okay? He'll, he'll, um, you know, he'll register for the Tour de France, Whatever, I don't know what he's going to do, but he's probably not going to run because, um, you know, there's something about slurred speech and a recession flirting with depression that people, economic depression, that people don't like. So anyway, hit subscribe to this channel. My goodness, 23 minutes. Hit subscribe to this channel. Hit subscribe to the stock market crash channel, the Bitcoin crash to 10,000 or lower channel. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I'll be back in a couple of hours. Thank you so very much very much.